Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to look at another past paper question from January 2020, paper 2. So let us begin. Jack was required to conduct an investigation on the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. Now, identify two ions present in the electrolyte and include their state symbols. So what we're given is concentrated sodium chloride solution. So the ions present are the sodium ion and it's aqueous. The chloride ion is also aqueous. Additionally, you have the hydroxonium ion, formerly known as, well, popularly known as H+, and you also have the hydroxide ion present. So these are the four ions present in the electrolytic mixture. Question two, state two factors that affect the, dis the discharge of an ion in the electrolyte during electrolysis. One factor that affects a particular ion being discharged over another is the position of the ions in the electrochemical series. Position of ions in electrochemical series. Chemical series. Another factor that affects the ion being discharged during electrolysis is the concentration of the ions. The concentration of the ions. What this is saying, the greater the concentration of the ion, the greater the probability of that ion reaching the specific electrode and becoming discharged. However, there are some exceptions in the case of potassium and sodium. Concentration doesn't affect it because these ions are too reactive. They are reactive that even if they were to become discharged, they would end up, end, they would end up reacting with water and whatever that is around it, forming back the sodium ion or the potassium ion. So it, it would seem as if they did not leave the solution. So concentration doesn't affect it when it is in when, when it is an when it is in an aqueous mixture. However, the only way you could get rid of sodium or potassium in terms of discharging is if it's in the molten state. And in the molten state, pure liquid, only the cation and the anion are present. And so no nothing else, no other ions there to compete with. Okay? Question three predict which ions present in the electrolyte will be attracted towards the anode. The anode, the anode is the positive if the pos is the positive part of the, the electrode and so it would attract the anions. And there's a brief way you can remember which one goes to the anode. Anion, anode. Get it? Anions go, anions go to the anode. Cations go, go, go towards the cathode. Okay? So the ions that would be migrating towards the anode are the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions. So those are the ions that will be attracted towards the anode. Now, write a balance equation for the reaction at the anode. Of these two, which one will be preferentially discharged? Is it the chloride ion or the hydroxide ion? Typically, under normal circumstances, 
where we have a normal aqueous solution, the hydroxide ion would, would be preferentially discharged because it is lower than chlorine, the, the chloride ion in the electrochemical series. However, remember it was concentrated sodium chloride that was added. Brine was added to water to get the aqueous mixture. And because of that, chlorine ion is present in more concentration. There's a greater probability of chlorine ion reaching the anode to be preferentially discharged. So in that case, the chloride ion will, would take preference and give up the electron. So it's chloride ion aqueous loses the electron, two of them, to form chlorine gas. So somehow throughout the reaction you would see bubbles of chlorine gas liberated from the from the, the, the system. Now we have to balance the equation because there are two chloride ions over here, well, to form chlorine, the chlorine element, and so we have to put a two right there to ensure that equation is balanced on both sides of the equation. Part 4, right? A balanced equation for the reaction at the cathode. Remember at the cathode there were two ions competing, the sodium ion and the hydroxonium ion or H plus ion. Which one will be preferentially discharged? Even though the mixture is concentrated sodium chloride and one would expect the sodium to be in greater proportion which is true but because of the reactivity of sodium and potassium these ions are too reactive that whenever they become discharged they would end up back reacting with water to form back sodium ion because this the ions that in this state that's their more stable configuration they like to remain in the ionic state because that's when they are extremely stable and that is why you find sodium in nature as salt because the so when they form ions that, that that is their more stable configuration so sodium ion would not be preferentially discharged because it is too reactive and that principle also applies to potassium so it is the hydroxonium ion that would be preferentially discharged in this case Again, it is also lower than sodium in the electrochemical series. So H plus migrated towards the cathode, gains two electrons to form hydrogen gas. And so you will see bubbles of hydrogen gas leaving the mixture, the, the system as well. We have to balance the equation. There are two hydrogens here, so we have to have two hydrogens over this side as well. And that would complete the reaction. Now, if you realize chlorine is leaving the solution, H plus is also leaving the solution. So what remains? Sodium and hydroxide. So one would expect the, 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 the mixture to become more alkaline because sodium is left back and the hydroxide remains. And so we, we expect the alkalinity of the mixture to increase as the system progresses. Part B, state whether each of the substances given in table 2 are classified as conductors or non-conductors. Magnesium ribbon, magnesium is a metal and so we expect that the C of delocalized electron should be moving nicely between the cations of the mag within the magnesium element and that would make it a conductor. Of electricity and heat. A plastic ruler, we all know that is a non conductor. And aqueous, the operative word right here is aqueous magnesium chloride. Solid mag magnesium chloride does not conduct electricity because the ions are not free to move about to transfer the electric current from one form to the next. However, in aqueous solution or an, or an molten state where the ions are able to move freely, then the electric current can move from one point to the next throughout the 
the, the, the mixture, the electrolytic mixture. So magnesium, aqueous magnesium chloride is also a conductor of electricity. All right. And finally, the next question says, carbon is an example of a non-metal. Stay you two uses of carbon. One is that carbon is used as a fuel that is in the form of charcoal. Another one, carbon is used as a lubricant. And that is in the form of, write that properly, a lubricant that is in the form of graphite. Another one, carbon is used for cutting, for tip drill, for the tip of drill to cut and so forth in the form of diamond. Used as a cutting tip in drills. That is diamond. We also know that diamond is used in, well, it's used for jewelry and so forth. And there are other uses of carbon. So we have come to the end of this video. If you really like this video, subscribe, like it, and share it. Remember to continue studying smart. See you soon.